Now let's settle for the details of our stories. Now the surprise introduction of new transport fares on some of the country's routes this morning is said to have led to some confrontations between passengers and driver's mates. The Ghana Road Transport Coordinating Council has indicated the new fares should take effect from this weekend. Some of the commercial drivers, however, say their local unions directed them to start charging with immediate effect. But Some of the passengers join you spoke to say they were forced to pay the new fares when they started their journeys this morning. Most of the commercial drivers were said to have applied a 20% increase, but most passengers said there were disagreements as to the way the calculations was done. The General Secretary of the Road Transport Coordinating Council, Al-Haji Alubaba, however says the fares are arbitrary until they have been sanctioned. He explains the introduction of the new fares was delayed because of the election petition hearing. The fares we, we proposed or we computed was based on the new models we had developed by, by our consultants. And uh, when this was submitted to the Ministry of Transport, because it's a new concept altogether, we need to give them time to study the, the proposals, of which time we will have to meet for final approval. And uh, on the line, we, we all understood the situation in the country. This Supreme Court uh, uh, ruling and uh, the agitations. So we thought it wise to suspend that issue until after the Supreme Court ruling. According to him, union took into account all necessary variables that affect their cost of operations. We take into account all necessary variables or components that are due to uh, the operation of uh, transport, commercial transport or transport in the country. Some of it is like uh, to mention the ties, lubricants, insurance, uh, this, uh, uh, taxes, vehicle income tax, etc. They will be looking at even the depreciation aspect of the vehicle because at, it tends to run. There will be tear and wear. So depreciation will be taken into account. They will be looking at fuel, which we also takes 25 percent in doing our calculation so these are the, the aspects or the components we take into account some commercial drivers join you spoke to have explained they have the backing of their local unions by the road transport coordinating council general secretary in response accused some of the unions of not respecting the directive some of our this you know brother you know organization are not trying to do uh, respect agreement because on Tuesday we all met or the leadership of all the union organizations met and it was agreed that the come 14th of September we expect fair increase no from there if we'll be hearing from on the air that some other union loading points are saying they got information communication from their their heads of linear organization instructing them to do an increase i think they have not respected the agreement he advised commuters to challenge the new fares until the official take effect from the 14th of september 2013. 
All right. Now, the transport fare hikes have, however, not been across board. Other commuters tell Joy News they were spared. The commercial drivers also say, though they were aware of the new fares, they will only charge them from the weekend. We increase it, but up to now, the GPR2 haven't talked anything, our chairman haven't said anything about it, so we are taking the old fare. They are our boss. Whatever they tell us, we will do. So when they increase it, we will increase it. When they increase the fare, they increase the spare part and everything. So immediately that they increase it, we also increase it. We are here, we are the <laughs> They collected the normal fare, but from 8 o'clock uh, in the morning coming, you know, drivers started charging extra 20 pesos. And well, which, which I questioned the, uh, the, the mate, he said, okay, it is, uh, there have been an increase across the board, uh, an increase of 20 pesos, but it is not announced, an increase of 20 pesos, but it is not announced, but there is no need to argue. If they increase the red roll fare, there will be a lot of problem in Trotro. When you join Trotro, you see uh, the passengers fight with the mates. Then all of uh, they, 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 they fight with the Trotro. Uh, the, the, the thing they must do is uh, when they will increase the royal fare, they should announce it. Then everybody will know that today they increase the fare. Then when you are coming, you are aware that you you will be paid this maybe me myself if i'm enjoying total i will everybody have in budget because if i i budget I, I, about okay i'm going to uh, uh north kaneshi i budget with one cd but immediately i go there they, they will say uh, one cd 20 pesos that time i don't have 20 pesos why can i go to the north kaneshi i can't go so i'll fight with the mates they me, myself, I don't know, so I'll pay the one CD. Indeed, everybody ha have their budgets. Everybody having budgets, like you said. But I have with me on the line Erastus Asari Donko from Kumasi. And let's go to the Ashanti region to find out what's happening there as far as uh, the price, the, the hikes in the prices of uh, the these hikes are concerned. Hello, good morning to you, Erastus. Good morning. Uh, what can you report from Kumasi? Well, in Kumasi, it looks like the message has not trickled down here mm. well with the drivers. And so uh, they are still sticking with the old fare. Uh, I've been asking some uh, taxi operators here, and they tell me that they've not been told of the increase. And mm. so they are still sticking to the old price, which is uh, 70 pesos for short distances then. Uh, one city 50 pesos for long distances. So mm. th that is the price they are still charging here. But I do know that in Kumasi, um, the, the passengers can be very rowdy if you come in with such uh, hikes, you know, spontaneously. Do you see uh, any, do you see some kind of acceptance, like general acceptance on the part of the people if this should be, uh, this should happen in Kumasi, as in if the prices should go up? In fact, I would see uh, some sort of uh, an uproar if. <laughs> Uh, they should increase it because even the drivers themselves are sticking to uh, increases in fares arising out of fuel increases. So mm. the, the question they're asking me uh, is that if you're talking about price increases, why? Have they increased the price of petrol? Mm -hmm. I said no. I said, okay, then we don't have any reason to increase our prices here. Mm. I think the same way the passengers will be asking those questions, that if there's not been any increase in fuel prices, mm. then they don't see the need. Uh, for an increase in transport fares. Yeah, that's a very good one for the passengers. It seems the drivers are on their side as well. But do you have you spoken to authorities, or you do that later in the day? Exactly. Um, we'll be monitoring what authorities uh, will be saying, and we'll be also be monitoring the uh, transport operators across board mm. uh, to to see what they have to say about this development. Mm.
All right. Thank you very much, Erastus Asari Donko, as joining us as correspondent in Kumasi. And he says that the people there are not ready to charge. In indeed, the drivers, both the drivers and the passengers seem to be on the same level. That's quite a good one, Smart. Okay. Well, it's good to know that they haven't started uh, charging the new fares yet in Kumasi. But away from the Ashanti region, the board of the Ghana Airport Company has been dissolved. The announcement of the dissolution was contained in a test email from the presidency. It reads... On the authority of His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama, the Minister of Transport, Jifa Ativo, has with immediate effect dissolved the board of the Ghana Airports Company Limited. A list of names for the reconstituting of the board and management of the company is currently before the Council of State as required by law and will be announced shortly. Now, Smart, I'm a bit, just a little bit interested in this story. Don't you think it's... Because the story that came, well, as far as the Ghana Airports uh, company was concerned, was that the, the woman who has been sacked Dorothy had taken Apple. yes had taken some decisions without con contacting the board. Mm -hmm. So now the board sacked the woman, and they said they were now going to uh, tell the presidency about it. I think that's the reason why. Don't you see that? You are from the presidency almost every time, so you should know. No, no, no. It's not something that we know officially, but okay. I mean, I'm putting pieces together. Okay, so piece them together. And it's and funny, you suck me, the and then a bigger, well, we'll see how that story <laughs> pans out, actually. But now let's go to the Ashanti region again. The Asantiman Council has formally protested a September 4 publication of the new free press that claimed some justices at the Supreme Court were bribed through the Asantehene to rule in favor of the president in the landmark election petition. Now, the subsequent review of the article on Kesben FM in Kumasi resulted in an attack on some persons at the radio station. Okay, I didn't know the, Chris, uh, the free press had become new free press. Is it rebranded or? I don't know. Okay, now school heads have uh, found to have forged the continuous assessments of their basic education certificate examination candidates will be sanctioned. That's according to the Ministry of Education and it says such heads could be demoted or transferred. Director of Public Relations Paul Kofi Krampa said examination more practice and forgery of continuous assessment is a worrying trend which undermines the WAIC examination. He was commenting on the freezing of the results of the of 113 schools at the 2013 BECE. Tar results of all candidates from 113 schools across the country who wrote the BEC have been withheld by the West African Examinations Council, WAIC, pending investigation into various examination malpractices. Apart from the forgery of continuous assessments, some of the schools whose results have been withheld are alleged to have registered unqualified students in junior high school form 2. The ministry's director for public relations says the sanctions will be imposed as soon as investigations are over. Education service has a, a code of conduct. Mm -hmm. Now, the, if a head of, of an institution is found palpable, there's a possibility that that person will be transferred. Mm -hmm. Or that person can also be demoted based upon the gravity of the offense. So there are sanctions different levels of sanctions. He cautioned teachers and heads of schools to desist from such acts and always provide the exact assessment of students. Demotion and or transfer. Yeah, and I think we agreed unanimously. That, that demotion, demotion is be better, better than transfer. So that's our recommendation to the GS. GS because to <laughs> transfer me, I go, I go to wherever, I'll go do the same thing. Yeah. And it's still the same people who are going to suffer. Well, so, that's it for the news. So let's uh, recap our headlines for this uh, morning's bulletin. Preston Mahama has dissolved the Ghana Airport Company board. And as the story suggests, uh, the Council of State has uh, received new list. a, a list. That's a new so list that they Deliberating and they'll come up with a new uh, a reconstituted board shortly. Mm. Transport fares have gone up by 20% and passengers, of course, are not happy about it. Okay, and the Sentiment Council has also uh, sent a complaint to the National Media Commission about uh, alleged bribery uh, reports or allegations being made against the mm. Asante Hene. So that's it for the news this morning. Rashida Baba Kadiri standing by with the AM Sports.
Hello, sports people. What do you have for us? <laughs> hey, so, uh, so you're, yeah, you're, yeah. Now you're anti sports, is that no, it? No, I'm not. So oh, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm there to you, balance your, I'm, I'm there to least, balance your you know, discussion. If, if, if the foreign front is going to be very difficult for you, let's talk local football. The Premier oh, League local. is back. The Premier League please, is please, back. Please, At least you know how Santa Claus is You know Accra has to be good. You see, let's keep this conversation going. Let me just be the balancer of your conversation. So you go. Oh my word. But Gifty, I've given you one reason to be happy because okay. we have the local Premier League bouncing back this weekend. Mm, and does so, that feel yes, the be... local Premier League? Does it work really? It, it, it I does don't find work. a lot of excitement uh, with it. The, well, you know, the, excitement, it to... the excitement, I tell you, is gradually building up. We are gradually okay. getting there because okay. at least we get people or players um, being sold from the local scene straight to the foreign front. Okay. So uh, we get professionals from the local scene mm. up there. So, I mean, we are not there. We but are getting there. We can get there. And we have teams there. like Kotoko buying from other African countries. Well, that well. really, uh, yes, it's true. It's, it mm -hmm. it is true. But you know, it it doesn't happen on a regular basis. Yeah. So they sign a contract for five years, and so you're sure that in five the next years. five years, and that's because we don't patronize. I mean, we don't patronize the local whatever league. The local league, the Ghana Premier yeah, League. We don't, we don't now, patronize it that Now, much. I think that level of interest is okay. rising up okay. because, you know, some three, four seasons again, it was uh, the, the, the new teams, the underdogs who okay. were taking over, but yeah. now it looks like it's coming back to hearts in Kotoko. So okay. it's, it's fairly good. At least there's some kind of interest there. Okay, so today, who ran the show? I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, you did. You but did. AF Sports is brought to you <laughs> by Tigo. Smile, you've got Tigo. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Rashida Baba Kaduri. So earlier we were discussing the Ghana Premier League, which is bouncing back this weekend, and uh, already all the centres are ready. But I seem to have a little problem with the Premier League board because they seem not to be ready, even though the teams, uh, the clubs are ready for, for this season. I'm talking about the 2013-2014 local Premier League season. I mean, if even you go on the GFA website, that's the Ghana Football Association's website, there's nothing that shows, apart from the fact that they have named the referees for this weekend's round of matches, nothing else shows that we are ready. There aren't any Globe Premier League fixtures on the website, nothing just a referee, so I'm sure that's one for the GFA to take. But uh, let's see the fixtures that are coming up for this weekend across all eight league centers. Remember that Kumasi Asante Kotoko are still going to be playing away from their usual home grounds because of their band. They haven't finished uh, serving their band. So the fixtures for this weekend in Berkwai, we see a Dibiasi hosting a car had to fuck a very tough one for them. And then Kotoko will travel to the Sunyane Coronation Park, their adopted home grounds for now, um, to play a Diana Stars. Inter Allies, one of the newly promoted size are taking on a Boussois Dwarfs. We see Hazak is also doing action against Mediama SC at the SC Pond Stadium. We haven't heard that name in a very long time because Hazak are back into the Premiership. Bechem United are also one of the newly promoted sides. They take on Amidas Professionals in Bechem. At the Golden City Park in Brookham, Chelsea will host King Faisal. Arsenal, uh, Brick, Hearts of Lions will host Ashanti Gold at the Pando Park. And then in Accra, at the Accra Sports Stadium, Liberty Professionals will take on WA All Stars. Now, I'll tell you why Liberty Professionals will have to take on WA All Stars at the Accra Sports Stadium instead of their usual Karindov Park. It's because um, the PLB didn't pass their venue. That's the Karindov Park. They didn't pass it uh, fit to be able to host matches. So they would have to play the first half of the Premier League for this season at the Accra Sports Stadium before they take on, um, at the, before they go on to the Karindov um, Stadium to take on the rest of their matches for the second half of the season. Now let's go to Europe and see what's happening. We begin with the English Premiership, and I'm very happy to say that on Joy Tele on Joy uh, TV, Joy Sports, actually this Saturday, we bring you that fixture from the Britannia Stadium. That takes Stoke City up against Manchester City at the Britannia Stadium. It will be live on Joy Sports. Exactly 2 p.m. we begin the action. So Manchester United at the Old Trafford, they will welcome Crystal Palace. Aston Villa take on Newcastle United. Fulham will take on West Bromwich Albion. And then uh, uh, we see Hull City also taking on Cardiff. Stoke City, like I said, they will be taking on Manchester City. Sunderland, they play home to Arsenal. Norwich City are away to Tottenham Hotspur. We see um, Everton hosting Chelsea. Southampton will welcome 
West Ham United. Those are the fixtures that are coming on for our, those are the fixtures coming up for the English Premiership for this weekend. Now, let's go to Spain and talk about the Spanish La Liga. See the fixtures that are coming up for the Spanish La Liga for this weekend's uh, round of matches. Wow, so we have Atletico Madrid taking on Almeria at the Vicente Calderon. Levante are up against Real Sociedad, and that will happen at the Ciutat de Valencia. Barcelona are at home at the Camp Nou to Sevilla. And uh, El Madrigal will see that game between Villarreal and Real Madrid. These matches are coming up on Saturday. Then on Sunday at the Los Camenes, we have Granada taking on Espanol. Coliseum Alfonso Perez Stadium will take on Getafe up against Osasuna. And then at the La Rosaleda, it's Malaga up against Rayo Vallecano. Real Betis at home at the Benito Villamarin to Valencia. Those are the fixtures coming up for the Sunday uh, for Sunday. And then on Monday, Elche will host the Real Valladolid and then Atletico Bilbao take on Celta Vigo at the San Mames Barria. So that's coming up in the Spanish La Liga. Now let's go to Italy and see what's happening. Tomorrow, in the Italian Serie A, we see Inter Milan up against uh, Juventus at the Stadio Giuseppe Meazza. We see Napoli up against Atalanta at the San Paolo. Stadio Olimpico will host that game between Torino and AC Milan. And hopefully, we will see AC Milan comeback boy um, Kaká in action for the Milanos. And then we also have on Sunday, Fiorentina up against Cagliari. Elas Verona up against Asulo. Lazio will be up against Kievo Verona. Livona up against Catania. Udinese up against the Bologna at the Stadio Freely. And then we also see Sampdoria versus Genoa at the Luigi Ferraris Stadium. To Germany now for the German Bundesliga 1s. Today, there's one game that's going to be happening at the Olympia Stadion, and it's that game between Hertha Berlin and VfB Stuttgart. And then on Saturday, that's tomorrow, Bayer Leverkusen will be up against VfL Wolfsburg at the Bay Arena. And then in the Allianz Arena, it's Bayern München up against Hannover Zesch und Neuntisch. FC Augsburg will be up against FC Freiburg. Mainz will be up against Schalke New Fear. Werder Bremen, they will host Eintracht Frankfurt at the Versa Stadion. Borussia Dortmund will be up against Hamburg SV at the Signal Iduna Park. And then on Sunday, one game, that's uh, TSK Hoffenheim up against Munchen Gladbach. We also have TSV Eintracht Braunschweig up against Nuremberg. That's happening at the Eintracht Stadion. So those are the matches coming for the German Bundesliga. Now, talking about Real Madrid in the Spanish La Liga. Um, yesterday, they unveiled their new, one of the new jerseys, actually not their new jerseys, one of them. That's their third kit for the season, and it's uh, by Ketsi Adidas. Let's see what happened during the unveiling of that kit. It's, uh, football action on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV tomorrow. It's at 2 p.m. and we take you to the Britannia Stadium where Stoke City will host Manchester City in that very big game. So do make a date with us at 2 p.m. tomorrow on the Joy Sports channel. Meanwhile, sports for this morning is done. My name is Rashida Baba Kadiwe. Sports on the AM show is proudly sponsored by Tigo. Smile, you've got Tigo.